I didn't know anything about independent filmmaking, number one. I thought every film was Hollywood films. And I had gone to film school, and then I had dropped out of film school. And living in New York, that's where I discovered independent films. I Beat on Ben Was Is, this is about black women in 19, early 1980, and they are comedians. And it's their story of getting into the industry and the challenges that they face as uh, black women comedians. There really weren't black women comedians in the media. And at that time, I think people probably only remember Jackie Moms Mabley. And so they talk about their, their challenges and also it is a performance piece as well. You get to see all their performances. The film features Marsha Warfield, Rhonda Hansom, Jane Galvin Lewis, and Alice Arthur. At the time, Marsha Warfield was pretty hot. She was doing a film called DC Cab, and she, she was either going to do it or just finished it. And later, we would see her on television. She was the bailiff in Night Court. And Marsha was out in LA. That's where she was working a lot, working the comedy clubs out there. Rhonda Hansom was on the East Coast here in New York, and she was working all the comedy clubs. She was also getting parts in films where she hit the cutting room floor. You never saw her, okay, but she worked. And uh, Rhonda, to this day, is a very, very hard worker. Alice Arthur, this is how I really got the idea for the film. She also was working the clubs, and she was a friend of mine. And when she told me she was a comedian, this was just before I moved to New York, she said, I have a surprise for you. And when I got here, she said, I'm a comedian. I decided to do comedy. And that's when I learned the routine of going to the clubs, taking a number, and uh, hoping you got on at prime time. So I, at the same time, was just beginning to shape my idea of being a filmmaker. I decided I was going after black comedians. I looked at a lot of them and I came across Jane Galvin Lewis. And Jane Galvin Lewis, she was also an activist and very politicized. And I really loved her comedy because she had characters that really addressed a lot of social commentary that, that was going on at the time. Rhonda was out in Long Island. I don't remember the club. It's probably not even there anymore. And that was a time when male strippers were big, okay? And so she was really the comedian who opened, and it would be male strippers there. <laughs> and, and so uh, we shot at that club. Then. Um, Jane, she was at Snafu, and I don't know if Snafu is still around, but that we shot there. And then we had to go to the West Coast for Alice Arthur and um, Marsha Warfield. Marla Gibbs, who was on the Jeffersons, she owned a club out there called Marla's Memory Lane. Alice had worked there, talked to them. We were able to shoot both Alice and Marsha at uh, Marla's Memory Lane. Well, I decided to write a proposal for this film to Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Lo and behold, I got the grant and they covered the, the whole film, the whole production. So this wasn't a struggle of shooting a little bit and then having to look for money, shooting a little bit more and having to look for money. That part was very lucky, but I also had the support of other people. So a woman named Leslie Holder, she's on uh, my credits. And what I, she did for me was she was working at a ad agency. And after hours, as we do, we used the studio to film a performance of Rhonda Hansom. And then Al Santana, who's very well known as a cinematographer in Brooklyn, he uh, shot everything and we went to Rhonda's house and we, we did an interview and I had been working at ABC and so late, late at night I went to a friend there and we uh, edited 
the, the videotape and sent it in along with the proposal. And they were impressed. And that's how I got uh, all the funding for that. I like to edit and it gives me a chance to just go back and really look at everything that was going on in my head, basically. I think about those times a lot. And I had an editor, Terry Jones, and we were working every day in the editing room. And this is something, I think, being women, she had had children. And so there were times when they would come in there as well. And uh, that wasn't, I think, for me to be a woman, it was like, that wasn't an annoyance to me. It was like, that's okay. You know, that, that's what we're doing. It's, it, it's all of us together to get, get this uh, done. So actually, I have very fond memories of that. I remember Essence Magazine got it, and they did a, a little write-up about it, and my film was being distributed by Black Filmmakers Foundation at the time. They called me the, the next day and said, what happened? Our phones are ringing <laughs> off the hook. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, there is this article in essence. And I mean, it was more than what they could handle because that's what they were doing all day. They were just answering the phone about that. And so everywhere, uh, I got a lot of distribution out of that because everywhere we go, people really responded to it. And I thought, and I think I said this, I thought that over the years, other people had probably uh, did something on the same subject in, in different ways, because that's how documentary goes. I found out that no one had, and I'm like, I don't get that, you know. I don't, I don't understand why no one else uh, uh, approached the subject anymore, because it isn't like, you know, when they say things are post-racial, and you're supposed to believe that none of this is going on anymore. Well, comedians, even last night, came up to me and said, you know what, some things have changed, but this is still very relevant. You know, still experiencing a lot of this. And so that's what I'm getting now, is comedians that weren't there then, if I meet them, they're, they're like, this is still totally relevant to me. Uh, just because you might see a, a few more comedians at time, or they'll have that one uh, stand-up on Prime or maybe even Netflix. There's tons of them. That's it. They, they don't get any more. And, and so I'm like, yeah, this is not post-comedy for them. It's like it's still going on. I like that it's relevant, but I would have liked for it to change. You know, I would like for somebody to be looking back and say, that's the way it was. That's the way it was. Not, yeah, still going through this. And I'm like, how, do, how, do, how does it stop ever? You know, how does anything ever stop? And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I have mixed feelings about that. I do. You know, I like it that people enjoy the film and see the film, but that part, that's the hard part, that to, women are still out there going through that. This is the BTRP Media Network.